Our time here on Earth is a gift, a grant from a population of extraterrestrials, travelers who now whimsically visit us at odd intervals, portending and sometimes provoking cataclysmic events. They are more ancient by far than any life on this world. Feared and misunderstood throughout human history, we've named them the Suisei, the Suchet, the Starry Messengers. Today, we call them comets. There are two different uh, populations of comets, um, the so-called Jupiter family comets, or the uh, short period comets, and then there are long period comets. The vast majority of comets are located in what we call the, the Kuiper Belt, which begins just beyond the orbit of our outermost planet, Pluto, and it's a flattened distribution of comets, uh, most of them orbiting in the same direction as the planets are orbiting the Sun. And as we go out further and further, the, this flattened distribution becomes less and less so, and eventually we get to the so-called Oort Cloud, which is a spherical distribution of comets surrounding the Sun. And the two different populations of comets have different orbits, different dynamics going on. Um, and there are slight differences between them um, in terms of what we see. The, uh, the longer period comets um, have more volatiles, they're somewhat more tenuous when they first come in, and that's because they haven't been processed as many times as the, the, the comets that go around the Sun many, many times close to the Sun, and that's the Jupiter family. But the comets that are now resident in the Oort cloud, which is vastly further out, than the Kuiper Belt actually formed interior to those that formed in the Kuiper Belt. They formed in the, the area of uh, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. Uh, they agglomerated there, and then those major planets actually threw them out into the Oort cloud, where they now reside, and then passing stars or the tides from the galactic plane uh, occasionally push them back, and we see a new comet coming in from the Oort cloud, like Hale-Bopp, or Hiakataki, it's usually quite a show when we see a new one. Comets can be marvelous world builders. Well, the comets are very valuable because they're, they're literally uh, shards from primitive bodies, or they may be uh, themselves primitive objects uh, born uh, with the birth of the planets. And even in the Kuiper Belt, and particularly in the Oort Cloud, another factor of a thousand times farther away than Pluto, these objects have been kept in deep freeze for billions of years, and so they're very well preserved samples of this ancient time. When they start out, they're very pristine. They consist of volatiles, not only water, but things like uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, and methane, and some rocky material. And they come into the inner solar system, and as those volatile things, gases, are heated up by the sun, they erode away. All that beautiful cometary tail arcing across the sky actually comes from a surprisingly tiny nucleus. When a comet gets near the sun, the water vapor starts to sublimate away from the surface and it doesn't come off uniformly over the entire body of that nucleus. It can come off in a jet or a fan. And when it does that, it acts almost like a rocket engine. And it adds a little propulsion this way or that way, depending on that force of the gas traveling away from the nucleus. And up close, that nucleus is surprisingly rugged terrain. Comets are rough at all scales. We call them fluffy fractal aggregates, meaning no matter how small and how detailed you were to get your view in on it, it would look rough and be very difficult to land on and scratch on. And despite their beautiful glowing white veils, when you get right down to it, these objects turn out to be, well, black, way black, blacker than the ink in your printer. Black as the hinges of Hades. Even this model is not as black as a real comet nucleus. And it's black thanks to an abundance of carbon compounds. It absorbs every bit of light coming towards it. And they're black as soot, and black as this stuff that I'm holding in my hand, which is amorphous carbon or just carbon molecules bound one to each other. So here, at the very heart of the comets, we find the priceless packages these starry messengers have been delivering. It was necessary 
for carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen to be transported to the inner solar system, to Earth, in this material we call prebiotic uh, material, prebiotic compounds, which are rich in the building blocks of life, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. It's believed that comets transported this material to the inner solar system. So in a way, these objects are really tied up with the own, our own evolution and the evolution of life. Thank <laughs> you.